I've been wanting to do this for a while, but uh, you know, every generic excuse in the book. Seems like a good day to try this. Uh, my name is Christina. I'm from Canada, and about three years ago, holy, about three years ago, I decided to move to Paris. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty good so far. It's been a wild ride. I'm an artist because I can, I can be free. I'm a highly creative individual and um, I find myself constantly playing with new mediums. I'm curious. I like to make things. I like to design things. I enjoy color. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Um, what I'm going to go over today, it, I guess it's sort of like a in-progress vlog kind of thing. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, one of the projects that I'm currently working on and uh, discuss, yeah, what's what's going on with it because it's an interesting one. It's challenging and it's, it's interesting. So I decided uh, to make some shoes. It's been really interesting so far. Uh, why am I making them? Because I like footwear. <laughs> I really enjoy designer stuff for the designs. I'm not like a, a brand fiend by any means, but I really, really enjoy novel design. And um, I thought this would be an interesting way to start experimenting with, I guess, more three-dimensional surface design, as well as just try something new and, and uh, learn some new techniques, I guess. Also, I just, I, I, want, I want a pair of court shoes for myself. I just want nice shoes. And I don't want to pay Paris prices, so the solution seems pretty, pretty simple. I decided, I mean, I, I've wanted to do this for a really, really long time, but I think that in the past, there were a few, a few things that I was lacking. One being the maturity, the patience, the resources, and um, yeah, it wasn't always easy to source things, source uh, supplies where I was living, and um, I, could, I couldn't find what I needed to, to do it. So what I've kind of discovered uh, through, through a couple different artists online is an at-home process. Uh, what I found really interesting through my research is that there are a lot of different techniques for, well for anything, but for, for, for cobblers, for, for shoemakers, there's a lot of different ways to, to go about doing this. Some people are trained formally, you know, in like, a, like by a fashion institute and um, they're trained in like big machines so it's a more industrial process. Uh, obviously not very accessible for the at-home artiste. Uh, then there are other kind of more, I guess, more traditional cobbler techniques that um, maybe are a little bit friendlier to, to the artist working at home. Uh, I found another, one artist in particular, one woman, who has developed kind of a, a method. And I decided to just watch and dissect it and source out the materials myself and just try it, trial and error, because I'm stubborn like that. <laughs> so it has been, it's been fun actually, it's been a lot of fun. I'll walk you through a little bit about what I'm, what I guess what I've learned and kind of what I'm working through. The first thing you need to start with, obviously, is a pair of forms. Like if I want to make one pair of, of heels, like, like a five or six centimeter heel with a round toe, you need a form in that size and style for every single shoe you want to make. So if I designed one style of shoe and I wanted to make it available in size six through 11, then I need to purchase all these forms. And forms aren't cheap. These ones cost about 80 euros. They're custom to my feet, my big pontoon feet. So they're the correct length and girth. And it's a round toe. It's a, it's a kind of narrow 
narrower round toe. And obviously it's pitched to make maybe, maybe like a five or six centimeter heel. So I can't build a shoe with this and then try to stack it on like, you know, four inch platform, whatever. So it's, you know, you're limited uh, by the form with the style that you create. So got my hands on these. And then the next thing that uh, that I decided to try, um, again, there's different ways to do this. You need uh, an insole, first of all. You need, a, a, especially with a heel, you need a shanked insole. So it's basically the foundation upon which the shoe is built. And you can either buy them industrially pre-made or you can make them yourself. So that's what I tried. And actually it was a success. It worked out really, really well. Um, and to do that, you need, <laughs> you need veg tan. Um, you can do it with two layers of the leather or Texan, you know, it's a special cardboard. So what I actually did when I made them, because I thought two layers of the, of the leather would be too thick, and I think I was right. Um, with the very first form, shoe, whatever that I made, I layered the two. So I, I did a layer of veg tan, the metal shank, and then a layer of the cardboard. And it worked really well. Actually, it worked surprisingly well. So I would call it a success. So you start with that, um, then you're going to design on the form. I'm not gonna, I'll go over it one day, I'm sure. I'm, I'm still, I'm definitely an amateur at this. You start with the form, and you build a pattern around the form. So, here's an example of what it looks like <laughs> when the pattern is uh, cut out in whatever material you're going to use. Then what you do is you do something called lasting, lasting the upper. So after you've prepared, I'm obviously skimming over a lot of details because you have to like stitch it with the lining and everything. So after you've created your pattern, you're actually going to take the insole on the bottom of the form, the upper on top, and you're going to stretch and attach, stretch the upper around the last and attach the two. So I did do that with these. This was the very first kind of experiment that uh, it kind of half worked. So it was like both successful and a complete and utter failure. <laughs> the learning curve is steep with this one. Um, so basically, so there's, there's an example of uh, the lasted upper around the insole. So there's your basic shoe form. And then the next thing is obviously to add heels. This has been an interesting, this has been its own chapter. Like I, I, could, I could write a book on just the heels for the heels because I had this thought, okay, you know, maybe I can go to like a thrift store and I can recycle a pair, right? That that's that's possible. They can find an old pair of shoes that are just like not in good shape, but the heels are still okay. And you can disassemble the shoes and reuse the heel. So I went into Paris thinking, okay, I'm gonna find a pair of like thrifted shoes for cheap. So obviously I'm trying to keep the cost of this down, like relatively reasonable. But I'm thinking I can just find a pair of thrifted shoes for like two euros or something, you know? Like they could be garbage shoes, literally garbage shoes off the street. I don't care, I just need to like take the heels and run. So I, I went into, I went to a few places, but uh, the cheapest I found was about seven euros for a pair of shoes and I'm thinking I don't want to spend seven euros for a pair of garbage shoes just to bring them home to destroy them I, I want like cheap I want to find like I want to find some cheap cheap heels I even went into my mistake uh, to the Marais and an, I don't know if you know this but uh, the thing about Paris and thrift stores is all these like vintage shops, they're super, it's super trendy. It's a very specific look. And um, you know, you're finding like like old heels and stuff from the 70s and the 80s, but they're like 15, 20, 25 euros a pair. So yeah, that 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 wasn't gonna work either. 
So then my next thought was like, okay, I can maybe I can just source them online. I found uh, I found a, a woman in, in Thailand actually who makes them out of wood. They're beautiful, and I'm sure I will order them at some point. But for just a single pair, um, this wasn't going to work either because uh, the minimum order was like you need to order 10 pairs of these for like 100 euros. And I'm like, hmm, if this doesn't work out, uh, that's 100 euros down the drain for an experiment. So wasn't into that either. So then the next thing that I thought to try was to cast them in resin to actually make my own. And actually, it worked out pretty well. So, um, yeah, basically what I did was I I cast them in, in resin. I cast a, a set of heel blocks, and I'll show you what they look like right now. What I did was I took I took an air dry clay that we we just casually had lying around the apartment, <laughs> and I I basically molded the roughly. It's not perfect. I molded the shape that I wanted. And then I made this like cardboard box, it's not very high tech, placed the clay heel inside and then I mixed a two part silicone and uh, basically poured a silicone mold and then also casually had some industrial, I don't know, tabletop resin, casting resin hanging out in the apartment. <laughs> um, and I wasn't sure if the stuff was still good because I bought it like a year ago. Apparently resin, if it's not stored properly, can go bad. Interesting. And what happens is it just, it won't cure properly. What you'll get is like a, an unusable jelly substance, right? So I was a bit concerned that maybe, maybe the resin wasn't good anymore. So I took my chances. I mixed the resin, I did a couple pours. The first one was a bit jelly and I was a bit worried that maybe it just, it was either toast or I didn't measure properly. So I went and got a glass measuring cup at Ikea and I was very careful for the second pour and it worked beautifully. So I poured or casted a, a resin block. Here it is wrapped in fabric. So obviously the second one is a little bit, um, <laughs> it's, um, it needs a bit of work. It, this was actually even a harder cast than the last one. The mold had some imperfections in it, so this one has some, some bubbles, some very unsightly um, blemishes, for lack of a better word. So it, I need to sand it and that's going to be fun by hand. No, it's not. It's not going to be fun. Um, but it worked. Anyways, it worked. So, once you've got the, the form of the shoe, you've got your heel. Yeah, that's right. Then you assemble the two. And then you go through the process of soling, which is the next chapter. I kind of decided to preemptively try it before I continued working on it. And uh, yeah, there are a few there are a few problems with this shoe. So, successes and failures. The first success was definitely the shanked insole. I was really nervous about this because it was a complete unknown. I really didn't know if it was going to work. I really didn't know if the result was going to be very good or if it would even be usable. And like I said, it's the foundation for the shoe. So it's a kind of important, sort of, it's super important. Um, it worked. It worked really well, actually. Um, so success, yay. Success number two, I was able to, to create this pattern and uh, stitch it pretty, pretty well. I'm, I'm quite happy with how the upper actually turned out. And um, generally, it looks like a shoe. So the shape, the shape turned out okay. The thermoplastic that 
that basically you create a toe puffer and what's called a counter counter stiffener. It's just two pieces of this plastic that you, you heat with a, a heat gun and you form it to the toe and the heel and what it does is it gives some integrity to the shoe, right? In general it worked, so it was both a success and a failure. I got the, the shape of the toe was pretty nice. The heel is a little lumpy, not gonna lie. Not very nice. Not the most attractive thing I've ever seen. Um, I'm not sure if maybe I bought this, I bought this, this thermoplastic from like some clog maker and I'm wondering if maybe it's too thick or if it's a, if it's a little bit different than other thermoplastics because this one was, this was actually challenging, it was really challenging to, to heat and shape and not burn my hands and it, it was, it was, I, I have to figure out that process a little bit better. It's a little bit bulky and so I'm wondering if maybe it's the wrong kind of plastic or if I just need to improve my, my technique. This is a possibility. I am an amateur. So success and failure. Um, big failure, unfortunately, well this is kind of two things, but the big one is, uh, yeah the pattern worked out, but uh, the heel's actually way too shallow. So, and I put it on my foot, it uh, doesn't really want to stay on. It's actually quite big. Because it's made out of fabric, my understanding is when you, when you use leather, you're supposed to stretch it really tight and you actually make the shoe a little bit smaller because it gives. So I tried to do that. I stretched it pretty tight to the form, but it's still like, if I jam my toes up to the very front, I've got a good gap. So I don't know if making the heel deeper will fix that even in a fabric shoe or if it'll be better with leather because it's tighter, taller and tighter. Um, this is the experiment part that, or experimentation part that I, I really don't know the answer to so we'll see how that works. And then the second like little, I wouldn't call it a failure, it's more like just something to note for like the next pair that I'm making. Um, I basically trace the bottom, like very carefully trace the bottom of the of the last to get the shape of the insole. Um, like very, very carefully. And I trimmed the I trimmed everything for the insole quite with a lot of care. It seems really wide. So just the way that like if if you turn it over and you look at the bottom, it's yeah, I know I know the soling's smaller, but it, it just seems really bulky and really wide. Um, so what I'm thinking for the next pair, and I've actually, I've already traced them out, um, I'm thinking about going a little bit smaller and experimenting with a, a smaller insole and seeing if that has an effect on it. So this is going to be interesting. I actually have a pair, um, I have a pair of court shoes, Texto, so it's just like a, it's like a, a cheap brand from Eram, I think. They're like 50 bucks or something. Um, but they have the embroidery, which I love. So I'm kind of using these as a as a guide for something that actually fits on my foot. These are actually a bit tight. These are quite tight. Like I can't really wear them around because they will hurt me. The, uh, the toe is quite tight and they're a little bit, quite a bit more narrow, mostly in the toe and the, yeah, in the toes. But the shape is good. The shape is good. The height is good. So I'm kind of using it as a guide. And when I when I looked inside, like if you kind of lift up the the layer on the insole, you can you can see their insole, obviously industrially made. But you can see that it it sort of bevels in, like the two layers bevel in like this. So it, it's like the the insole is actually smaller, and then the I uh, can't remember what you call it. Or well, the insole lining, I suppose, um, is is bigger. It's like a, it's a, I don't know, maybe one mil. I don't know. It's a really, it's a really thin leather with like foam underneath, just like, yeah, just to to kind of pad it and to cover. I could rip it open, and to pad and cover like where where the heel is attached through the the footboard. So. 
Taking that into account, I thought, okay, I'm gonna try and make the insole smaller, leather, wrap it really tight, I guess, try to smooth out the, the thermoplastic a little bit better, and um, we'll see how this goes. This is gonna be interesting. It's already interesting. Of course, what I'm what I'm really curious to see is how long it takes me to make something that actually looks decent and is wearable. Um, how many tries? Like this actually isn't that bad. It, it's got its it's got its quirks. <laughs> it's got its problems, don't we all? Um, but yeah, I think I think this next run is going to be interesting. Obviously, the the first version I didn't want to use the leather because. I would feel really bad like sacrificing that to the experimentation like learning process and this is this is this is all scrap so I actually this is a, I made a jacket out of a coat like an overcoat out of this fabric and this is just scrap fabric left over um, it's like a cotton polyester with like a, a cotton lining so you know I'm not really upset about it I'm not discouraged by it either, so. We talk about souling out souls, but uh, I'll, I'll get into it maybe another time. Again, I've got some learning to do. But with the souling, I found, this is what I love about Paris. So Paris has a lot of sort of, especially compared to, to home, um, you get a lot of like these little boutiques, right? Like highly, highly specialized boutiques. So, it's a bit challenging, at first it was anyways, uh, if I was trying to, to find different things. I, I, there's no, there's not just like one place to go, you don't get like like the Home Depot, Costco, department store kind of, I mean you have BHV but that's, a, that's like a giant boutique, it's completely, <laughs> it's obscenely expensive. To, to find certain things you, you really have to know where to go and, and uh, what it's called in French. There's that whole challenge too. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> that has been interesting. So I was looking for rubber soling. Uh, what is it? Plaque caoutchouc? I'm like, oh, that's nice. Can't wait to embarrass myself trying to pronounce that one to a stranger. Oh yeah, I found this place. This place that was like a, a cobbler supply. Absolutely amazing. And it's one of those like, again, little tiny hole in the wall. They just basically have like, it reminds me of like the um, uh, motor vehicle parts supply places. You know, it's just like a front desk and then it's just like stock in the back. So you're like, hey, I'm looking for two of these. I need new spark plugs, I need whatever. So, you know, I, I went on, I found they had a, a website, this place. I kind of found what I was looking for. I'm like, that looks okay. And then went in, I'm like, yeah, this is what I'm looking for. And the guy's like, okay, in, in two mil or six mil. And and the thing is, he didn't just bring it out and go, okay, here you go, pay and get out. He goes, what are you making? I'm like, oh no. And I'm telling him heels. But I think he understood like the heel, as in like the heel of the heel. So the heel here has like six mil you know, like six mil rubber on it. So the heel needs something thicker because obviously you heel strike, that's gonna take a lot of brunt. The rest of the soling, I can't remember, he, he mentioned the name of this area, I cannot remember for the life of me what it is. You can use something like a two mil. So I'm thinking like, I'm working at home with a pair of scissors. <laughs> so he goes, it's for heels and it's two mil that I asked for. He's like, it's too thin. It's too thin for that. And I'm trying to explain, no, 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 it's perfect for my project. It's perfect for my project. Like, it's good, it's good. And he goes, no, no, you need at least like, at least uh, whatever, four to six mil, I think six mil plus for the heel. And I'm trying to explain to him in my broken French, like, let me take it, leave me, leave me in peace. But uh, yeah, it's cool, this little place, the guys, work in there they they know their stuff and they're actually into what they do right so a wealth of information a little daunting trying to tackle it in another language but uh, I signed up for this so anyways there's uh, there's the project is one of the projects 
there's a little overview of like the pieces and the working parts and uh, what I'm currently trying to do. Just build a shape that stays on my foot, doesn't fall apart, doesn't disintegrate. And then I guess once we've got the, the pattern and like the prototype done, then comes the, the fun part and the designing and the embellishing and the integrating illustration into the surface design. So we'll see. Thanks for listening and um, see you next time. Bye.